Decluttering is one of those things that can be extremely helpful to your life, yet incredibly intimidating at the same time. Especially if you feel like minimalism and owning less is sterile or threatening to your self-expression. I mean, after all, it is your home and you have the right to live in and enjoy it the way you please. However, I'd like to offer you a piece of advice if you humor me for a second. Because minimalism is not about limiting your self-expression, nor is it some sort of elite status that only the 1% can obtain. So if you're the slightest bit messy, or if your life feels absolutely out of control, but you're up for the challenge of decluttering and regaining control of your life, then let's slow down and ease into this conversation with my first piece of advice. You have to start with the right mindset. Decluttering can be intimidating, I know, but like anything that's new or challenging, the first step is always the hardest to take because it requires the largest attitude adjustment. Don't believe me? <laughs> okay, let's run through some examples. A, you're trying to get out of debts and get your finances under control. But in order to do that, you have to tweak your spending habits, stop using credit cards, change your lifestyle, maybe even make a few temporary sacrifices, all of which require you to adjust your attitude. B, you want to change the way you eat and begin exercising more. But in order to do this, you definitely have to adjust your attitude. This may include changing your habits around cooking more rather than eating out, adopting a new daily routine, or identifying your source of motivation behind why you want to exercise to begin with. C, you're struggling to declutter your life, but why? Well, we've already identified that you're possibly feeling intimidated. What else? Are you overwhelmed, stressed, don't know where to start, overthinking, or are you emotionally attached to everything you own? See, if you wanna overcome these feelings and begin making progress with your decluttering, then you have to adjust your attitude so you start with the right attitude. Remember, the first step is always the hardest, but this, your mind, is also the largest hurdle. The second piece of advice I have for you is to forget perfection. I get it, maybe you feel intimidated by decluttering or minimalism or owning less because you don't think it's possible for your space or your life to look like those that you see online. The pleasing aesthetics, the monochromatic color palettes, the furniture that's minimalist in design but not in price, <laughs> the closets and pantries that appear to be highly organized works of art. It's perfection. In your mind, yet it still feels out of reach for what you think you can achieve. And you know what? I agree with you. Perfection will always be out of reach. So forget perfection. Instead, focus on purpose. What are your goals? What do you value? How do you enjoy spending your time? Now, if the things you own or the people in your life, regardless if you have a bad habit of being messy or not, are interfering with your ability to achieve your goals, maintain your values, or enjoy your time, then consider letting it go. With complete transparency, my life in space didn't always look like this. I started with a mess as well in every sense. But with intention, purpose, and turning a blind eye to perfection, I've been able to make some progress. And you can too, believe me. All right, now let's get into some tactics that you can begin implementing into your life starting today. Number one is get rid of the dumping ground. This is a great tactic for anyone who's actively decluttering their life but particularly important for you, especially if you have messy tendencies. What this means is take a step back and pay attention to where in your home you collect the biggest mess or the most clutter. As an example, let's assume you have an entryway table, a coffee table, a dining table, an extra chair in your living room, a bookshelf, or a half empty closet in your spare guest room that acts as your dumping ground for all of the mess and clutter you've accumulated. Now, getting rid of the dumping ground means to remove the item that you dump your mess on as an option for you to dump your mess on. So maybe that's physically removing the coffee table so it's no longer there for you to just throw things on that creates a mess. Or maybe it's putting a lock on that closet in your spare guest room so you can't just stuff and hide things in there that you don't wanna deal with. See, when you remove the dumping ground, it not only forces you to clean up your mess, but to declutter and develop new habits so you don't continue creating the same mess. Number two is use catch-all baskets wherever possible. What is a catch-all basket? <laughs> this is a basket that you put out in high clutter traffic areas, and it's used, as the name suggests, a catch-all for you to toss and throw in all of your clutter and hold it there until you have the time to take that basket and everything in it and sort through it. Donate what you don't need, 
throw away what's damaged or unrepairable, and find a home for the things you decide to keep. I love this because it helps you move the needle in regards to cleaning up the mess, but it also helps you build some structure around your decluttering process so you can quickly make decisions about what to keep and what to get rid of every time you go through each basket. Number three is strategically place decluttering bags or boxes throughout your home. In other words, set yourself up to declutter as you live. Now, this is an idea that I've talked about throughout my content on numerous occasions, each in a slightly different way. And I'm repeating it again here in a slightly different way again, because I've learned throughout my life that it's not always about what you say, but how you say it. So strategically placing decluttering bags and boxes throughout your home creates go-to hotspots for you to easily declutter and donate to things as you're living in your life and going through your daily routine. Some key areas may include your closet, a small bag or box on the kitchen counter, the laundry room or the family room. If you have kids, maybe you put one in their room. Now, as you live your life and you stumble across something that can be donated, be it clothes or toys or household items, you can simply drop it into one of your donation bags or boxes. And then at the end of the week or at the end of the month, you can consolidate everything and drop it off at your local donation center. Number four is start small. When doing any of these things I mentioned in this conversation, remember that the goal is not to create such a shock in your life and routine that it completely turns you off from the idea of decluttering and regaining control of your life. Start small, or start slow rather, means do not try to attack all of your clutter, all of your mess, all of your life all at once. Instead, it's best to approach each area of your life, each room in your home, each pile of mess individually, one at a time. You're less likely to end up overwhelmed and stressed, and you're more likely to build momentum and make progress long term that actually helps you declutter your life regardless if you have messy tendencies. And We'll work on breaking that habit together another time. If this conversation really resonated with you, comment below and let me know which part stood out the most to you. Also, let me know if you're a messy person or not. It's okay if you are, I'm just curious. Keep growing on your journey, and most importantly, always remember to stay true to you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.